So hello everybody, it is Friday, but it's not going to be a Dax Fridays because I did a Dax Fridays video on Wednesday, <laughs> okay? So we're doing a vaccine tracker and on Monday I showed you how to get the data. On Wednesday I showed you how to create a model and then do the calculations. That's why I moved it to Wednesday and into this video I was supposed to show you the visualization, but guys, it is a very easy visualization. So it is basically a bar chart, so <laughs> I don't need to show you how to do it. You will be able to get this file on Kerbal Download Center community downloads in case you want to see how I did it, but there's no point of me doing that. So what we're going to do instead, I'm going to show you how I do this. So every day at 12 o'clock, a new, this is the, the original <laughs> report, a new version of the vaccine tracker gets published on Twitter. And that's the project that we're going to crack on today. So let's get started. Okay guys, so this was the most difficult, the, not the most difficult part, but the one that took me the longest time and it was tougher to troubleshoot. So we're going to use Power Automate to do this. And uh, th this is what we're going to do. Um, on part one, link down below, I'll show you how to create a workspace on, um, on powerbi.com on the service with premium producer capacity or license. Okay, you need to have that. So we're going to do that. Now that we have created the report, we're going to, this is my premium producer capacity. We're going to print, publish the report in there. Why do we need premium producer? Well, my idea was to use the export to file API. And uh, for that, I read you need premium uh, license. What I did not realize <laughs> is that when they say premium, they need they mean premium. Premium per user, you cannot use the export to API, um, the export to file API, which for me was a huge bummer. But it got confirmed, you can't use it. It is because they don't want us to abuse the premium per user thing. So it, it is a, a pity actually. So I was thinking, okay, maybe I can just tweet, you know, create an alert and tweet the, the number, but I wanted to have a picture. I think it's a lot easier if you have a picture on it. So I realized that uh, this is our report, right? So I'm going here. This is, you see here, premium per user. If you don't know how to create that, go to part one and you'll see. So what I did instead is create a subscription. So with premium per user capacity, you can create a subscription, which is the same as export to file, but instead of being an API, you get an email, right? So that's why I didn't understand why they wouldn't, you know, allow the, the API to work on premium per user, but hey, their decision. So vaccine tracker and I am going to e email this to myself once a day and I'm going to have an attachment, a PDF attachment um, sent to my email. And then we're going to grab that PDF attachment and that's the one that we're going to tweet. Fair enough, right? So click save. The subscription is set. You can actually go back to subscribe and you can run it immediately, right? So this is going to send me an email. Now, if we go to flow, um, let me bring the power automator flow. Obviously, I already have one because I have it running. You've seen this, that it's been running for quite a while already, but we're going to create a new one. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. On Flow, we're going to actually search for a template. Why reinvent the wheel? So we're going to search for email attachments, and there are actually quite a few. So you have a save Office 365 email attachment to OneDrive. Beautiful. We're going to do a little bit, then, you know, transform this a little bit. So create Flow. And now we're going to edit this. So it says on a new email, the email is going to get into the inbox and it is going to be to me 
then the subject folder is the title that you give it into your subscription email. Now, make sure that it is very distinct and nothing else gets tweeted, just in case. So vaccine tracker, only attachments, include attachments, yes. And then it says apply to each attachment on the email. So it says uh, attachments, create file. I had some issues with these and it was that it did not create the file. I don't know why. So I have to add a de delay first in order for the But I have to add it in here. Not in there. Let me delete that. If I didn't add the delay, it just didn't work. And this I don't want. This I don't want. Add an action. Delay. 30 seconds. took me the longest time to figure this out, actually. I, I still don't know why it's needed. Create file on OneDrive, and then the path is going to be, I have actually the one that is, gets created automatically. So attachments from file name is going to be attachment name file content is going to be attachment content. And then the next one is going to be to get the file content. So to get the content of the attachment. So get file content. And here it is the unique identifier, which is the ID, the ID of the attachment. And then the next one is the the actual tweet. So tweet, post a tweet. And then what you want to post it, you just, I actually um, made this a public report. So you go to, uh, now, it's, now this is under share. I had to Google that. So a web report published to web. If you have more than one page, you can select which page you actually want to um, hear. Now, I just have one. The other ones are um, hidden, that uh, tooltips. So copy that page, co copy that link. I actually have my tweet. It comes with a link to the Power BI report. So if you click in there, you'll get to the report. Okay, so I had the text, put whatever it is. And now in here, you put file content. Here's the thing that took the longest time for me to actually understand. If I run this, where is it going to send it? It's going to serve it to, let me send it to my other. So I'm going to save it. And let me see if it'll run it. Manually. And then I'm going to show you how my this is the original one, right? This is the one that I've been using all the time. As you can see on the Twitter feed, it works perfectly. But let me show you this. If I go here to the history, it fails every time. So according to flow, the media, which is the PDF, was not recognized and the Twitter was not sent when in fact it is sent. And this threw me off for the longest time because I thought, you know, I go here. I didn't think to go into Twitter and look because if it said here that it failed, I assumed that it failed. But f I don't remember for whatever reason I then went to tweet and then I saw that I had all the tweets in there. I so said, like, it's working. Still, every time you're saying that it's not working when in fact it is. So it has to be something wrong with 
the connector, the tweet connector, that it doesn't understand that it is actually sending something because it is working. But that is basically the way for you to send reports if you are a governmental agency or a local agency, if you are, uh, I don't know, a non-profit, or you have data that is public that you want to share with everybody in a tweet, this is a perfect way to do it if you have premium per user or premium license. If you have a premium license, you can actually use a connector that is called export to file. Then that's the one that I was actually going to use. I'm going to show you, yeah, no, it won't make sense what I'm going to do now, but there is export to file here for Power BI reports. And this thing works only with premium. You can use that instead of subscribing to the email, getting it from, it will get it directly from Power BI service, which is beautiful. But unfortunately for me, it won't work. But it's a beautiful way to actually send the information out. I'm going to keep this running until the whole world has been vaccinated and we can actually go out and have a drink like normal people again. Oh, I can't wait. Anyhow, I hope that this was useful. Um, I will see you again on Monday again with probably a Power Query video. We'll see. Until then, enjoy your weekend and bye bye.